I am a Palestinian Muslim American activist born and raised in Brooklyn and every Islamophobe's worst nightmare. I think when a lot of people see me and I'm a Muslim woman and I'm you know, super progressive and they think that I'm some sort of anomaly, right? right? They think that there's only one of me in the world. But in fact, there are many millions of Muslim women who are just like me. With respect to your identity as a Palestinian and your identity as a Muslim, you face extreme criticism and hate. It's really interesting in this country that we connect um, choice with clothing, right? So you can choose to wear a mini skirt or a bathing suit at the beach and then be seen as empowered. But for some reason, when I choose to not wear a bathing suit and wear a hijab, for some reason, I'm not empowered. We are not shattering stereotypes per se. We are just being us and being ourselves and just existing in this world as Muslim women. Malcolm X is a big inspiration um, in the way that I decide to speak truth to, to power no matter uh, the consequences. And I always know that there's going to be consequences and backlash to the things that I say and do. I reread the autobiography of Malcolm X and it brought me much more closer to my own religion. My coming into the movement um, came um, after the tragic events of 9-11. It was the first time that I, as a Palestinian Muslim American, felt any type of specific direct oppression against myself or my communities. And when I started realizing that um, it wasn't safe to be Muslim in America. So I wear these bracelets every single day, and these bracelets are made out of um, shavings of olive trees in Palestine. Olive trees are trees that live for thousands of years. They remind me that I'm connected to an oppressed people that have lived under the longest military occupation in human history. Social justice movements are not convenient. If your feminism doesn't include all women, if it doesn't include the hijab that I wear on my head, we don't need your feminism. Um, as someone who was part of the organizing of the largest single day demonstration in U.S. history, the Women's March, that stage was full of people who are from marginalized communities. And we wanted to set a precedent for the rest of the movement that you cannot have a movement that is not led or centering the voices of the most marginalized because they have the most at stake mm -hmm. and they know what needs to happen because they will benefit from the change. What, what your kids mean to you, I know that you had kids at a really early age and you're raising them now in the around the same neighborhood you grew up. They are my everything. They are brown Muslim children who are trying to figure out how to grow up in a country that doesn't love them that doesn't think they belong here, that doesn't believe the faith they follow belongs here. They understand what I'm doing, um, they support what I do, um, and then I you know, see them and say to myself, every day I work to make my country a country that loves you just the way that I love you. And I'm not here to see the fruits of my labor. I'm here to do what I can and give it on to another generation. For younger women or young people of any type that are watching, what is your advice to them to help them achieve what they're setting out to do? The most important thing for me is just be unapologetically you every single day. Don't ever let anyone make you feel less than you are. And when you feel whole and you feel proud of every piece of your identity, whether you think it's complex or not, doors just open for you. Um, so love yourself and just be unapologetic.